What's up? Welcome into the Orange Zone podcast. We are your place for all things Syracuse Orange. Reminder, you can find every episode on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. We also have every episode on our CMY Central YouTube page. What's up from the Sky Camp? If you're watching, how we doing? New episodes are released Wednesdays, and we invite you to like, comment, and subscribe for more OZ content on this award-winning show. I'm Tommy Sladek. This is Samantha Crossan. We have Brendan Hodges, and we are in the dog days of summer. Dog woof. days. Dog days, woof, woof, woof. Honestly, nice breather in a way. This is the time when the sports industry gets those vacays in, but when we're here, I want the action. I crave it. Me too. I'm missing I'm missing the football season now. I have to say I'm already sort of itching for mm. football season. I'm itching for playoff baseball. There are things that I want that I just cannot have in this direct moment. I mean, do I even yeah. want playoff baseball, though, with the Mets? Like, hmm. Do I even want that? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I will. I feel like that's 50% of your feed these days on Twitter is just your pain as a suffering Mets fan. Pain, sorrow, heartbreak. PTSD. They're better PTSD. than the Phillies right now, though. Yeah, what's going on with that, Brendan? Okay. Can, we really, can we just say what's going on with the Marlins? Also, how They're are you, good now. Brendan? I forgot to say producer Brendan Dude, on the... I'm, I'm good. Did I say it? it? Yeah. yeah well, you said producer Brendan. No, okay. I'm good. I'm, I'm good. I'm happy to be back. Good. Happy to have you back. Um... I don't even know about the Phillies, to be honest. I don't even know. Yankees suck, too, by the way. Just going to throw that out there. So the Northeast, we just stink? Just bad, bad, bad all around. Man. The Yankees are nothing without Aaron Judge. It's just the truth. I mean, that the, the Subway series, when it was no Aaron Judge and no... Um, Pete Alonzo. Yeah, it was kind of like, mm. It was a little strange. I saw... I'm not sure if you guys have ever seen. There's this guy on Twitter who makes exclusively baseball graphics okay. and he had a cool graphic today that was showing team batting averages throughout I think the past month and there was only one team that's collective team batting average was below 200 what team is it the Mets the Yankees oh. <laughs> I was like damn that's no really and that I feel like that shows you without Aaron Judge like wow dude <sighs> that's gross Oof. That's big time gross. Anyway. Anyway, content for today. Um, we're starting with one that has to do with Jesse Edwards, and that is Bob Huggins' resignation from West Virginia basketball. Huge news this offseason. We're also going to be getting into who we are expecting to be this starting 22, the starting 11 on SU football, SU, SU, or SU football's defense and offense, kind of the plug and play, and we'll have a little bit of fun with that. But we got to start with the Bob Huggins news because this is a a – for a career-wise, a Hall of Fame coach, a name that's been around for decades, one that's been was at Cincinnati forever. He then comes to West Virginia 16 years ago. There's a nice little stretch of Syracuse, West Virginia happening in the Big East days. Then you have Syracuse in that Sweet 16 run two years ago, knocking off Huggies, Mountaineers, and ultimately Huggins is done. He resigned DUI last Friday, not his first DUI, just bad. Bad, bad, bad. No excuse in this day and age when you have Ubers literally at the tip of your fingers. Um, two times the legal limit. Was in Pittsburgh. Thought he was in Columbus. It wasn't pretty. And, and ultimately, this is six weeks after he used an anti-gay slur on a Cincinnati radio station. So it was one of those where I'm sure it was kind of like, this is the last straw with you. And it's it's done. What's going on, man? That is bad. Straight yeah. up. No other way to phrase that. And I do have to say I do feel really bad for a guy like Jesse Edwards mm -hmm. I know there are some options here so we can go through what may or may not happen but either way you know he already transferred here so now it's a matter of what do you do do you transfer right. out do you stay what would you do well the rule right now is that they now have a 30-day window right. so if if a player's aid is getting taken away say they're on a full right they're on a scholarship and goes down to partial they're given that window, which should have been the case from day one. I don't know why that's a newish rule. But if there's also a head coaching change, that's a 30-day window for these players. And I want to hear what you guys have to say first. I have my thought on what he's going to end up doing, and I have reasons for that. Uh, but ultimately, it it stinks for him. It stinks for the other transfers coming in when you have this idea of what you're going to be playing for, and that is completely taken away. Of course, it could be an internal candidate. We'll see. I think... I think he'll stay. Mm -hmm. I think he'll stay. I just feel like he already made this commitment. There's more than just basketball here. I You would have to think 
imagine at this point he already has his, most of his life down there, bring all your things down there, all, everything is set up and ready to go. And he even said from the start that there were other reasons outside of basketball that he wanted to transfer. You know, I think he wanted that fresh start. He wanted to be able to be in a different environment. He wanted a different level of happiness. I know that he could probably transfer somewhere else, but I just think we don't even know who the new coach is going to be yet. So I guess it would be, you know, dependent on that. But I, I could definitely see him staying and at least riding it out for a year, not to mention there's money involved in this as well, yes? Big time, big time. Hodges, what's, what's on, what are you thinking? Oh, Tommy, me and you talked about this, yeah. I think, yesterday uh, when I came. I come down to his office every day for whatever reason. He comes down, he checks in. Yeah, with other, very pro- nice with other producers. Before he heads out. That's I, adorable. I, I think yeah. he'll, he'll stay. Uh, and it goes back to the conversation we had earlier this year. It's like, the NIL was a part of it. I think that was made abundantly clear. And if that's all set up and that's good to go, just why not? It's his last year of college basketball. Um, make with it what you can. Um, and it's no, like Sam said, it's no good to, like, as you get settled, decide to, I need to pick up and go again. And it's situations like these that really test the idea of the transfer portal because everybody's gone somewhere. There are only a few names left there that are kind of like big names that people will want. And now you may have a secondary influx, kind of like that second wave of free agency you see in professional leagues in that regard. Right. I, I agree with both of you here. I, I do think he stays, but who knows? End of the day, we'll find out. But this was a player who I think was probably pretty honest with himself and understanding that the NBA, an NBA career might not be in his future. If it was right in this moment he would have packed it up and and tried the draft Mm -hmm. process but he didn't because for him for jesse and the people close to closest to him they saw this as a huge opportunity to capitalize in one year capitalize in one year to every sense and try to set up yourself for success down the road will he continue to be playing pro in some regard absolutely but we're talking big time money to play college basketball in an environment that i think he's going to thrive in so what that number is at West Virginia, I think, clearly was either because he was down to there, Kansas, and Gonzaga. I mean, talk about three programs. Right? Are you kidding me? Wow. And there's two sides to look at this. Was he getting great money at all three, but what West Virginia was offering him starting five spot? Was he going to be having to come off the bench at Kansas or Gonzaga? That's a possibility. Or it was just flat out all three said, you'll come and play for us, but here's the money deal. And he went with what was clearly what he thought was his best opportunity with the Mountaineers. And I don't think that changes. Not to mention, maybe I I almost guarantee you there was also a part of it where maybe he just liked that school the best. He just got a great vibe from it. There is something to be be said about. I know. I know there's money and other things, but I don't don't trash Morgantown at all. You know know what I'm saying? I, I feel like sometimes there is a culture element to it, but there also it does make you wonder how much of it was based off of a coaching decision and how devastated sure, is he by this? Sure. You know, that's a big part of the culture is who your head coach is at any given time. And that is just brutal. Like I remember when I was playing, I think I went through maybe three different head coaches, seven or eight altogether, including assistants, foul. It's brutal. You know, it's like you're starting over. Lot, yeah. Not to mention you talk about, okay, well, we think that you're going to have a starting five spot here. That doesn't necessarily remain true with a new head coach, though. Mm -hmm. Like, nothing is promised in that regard. You know, you still have to earn that. And in a sense now, let's just say that that was a situation. Now you're back into that tryout stage. That's how I felt even after being a starter for a few years. New coach, new tryout. Because this person does not know who I am, and they don't owe me anything. You know, they're, they're probably being brought in because they're trying to change something. So who's to say that that thing isn't you? Yeah, I've also I, I've dealt with that in the past as well, and it's it's really hard, really hard to especially get that group to mesh and get on the same page because in some ways it feels like starting over. But we could also see something where you know you had a string of really impressive transfers that are a part of this class coming in with Jesse, and it could be a part that they've grown pretty close in these last few months, and they want to stick it out and do this thing together, more so paying attention to I have my unit of players. The coach is one thing, but I got my boys here, and we're going to be WVU, so we shall see. But uh, blind rating exercise that we did with the top SU Athletics moments, we're doing that again. 
but with reasons why a student athlete would transfer. Brandon, you have five. I do have five uh, in no particular order mm-hmm. and similar sort of thing, but we're going to go through this a little bit quicker than last time because yeah. these are pretty general. Uh, obviously, use the spot, you lose it. First one. The reason being athletics, meaning a potential coaching change, playing time that you may or may not get, or the level of competition you want to step up, or you think, hey, maybe this is a bit too much for me. Okay. Great one. That is a great one. Or are we like doing it yeah, as yeah, a group? Yeah, yeah. Just, okay. Like, just put it down and what, what do you guys do? Just like a quickly where you're putting it on your list. Okay. What is it again? Uh, anything athletic. Coaching changes, playing time that you may or may not get, and level of competition too high, too low. Hmm. Some serious thought into this from Mr. Sladek. I'm just going to rip through these here. Okay. We can go over the list at the yeah. end. Uh, academics, potential grad transfer. Hey, I'm not learning what I want to learn. Hey, I thought I was going to be a professional athlete, but I don't know if that's panning out, and I want to go somewhere where I can have a backup plan. Okay. What's three? Three, move closer to home family ties. Number four, as Sam said, the good vibes, the campus atmosphere, the surrounding town atmosphere. Say you don't like Tallahassee, Florida. Not not picking on Florida State at all. Say you don't like Tallahassee, you'd rather be in like um, – uh, near Las Vegas. You want to okay. go from Florida State to UNLV, that sort of thing. And then finally, NIL slash branding, personal branding. Hmm. Ah. Did I trick up Sam Darn this time? A little bit, a little bit, a little bit. All right, let's start at number five here. What did you guys have in the five spot? I had the B, whatever B was, whatever the second one was. The academics. B, bro. <laughs> academics. <laughs> wow. You should, yeah. you should have just wrote the wrote the. Yeah, I wasn't. I wasn't really thinking. I here. also put. I also put athletics at two. Wait, what'd you put at five? What'd you put? At oh, I'm five? sorry. You guys said five. Sorry. Yeah. Home. Yeah. Um, really? Wow. Yeah, moving closer to home. Why was that? Family Be- area. Because because college is about growing up. <laughs> There, there's not one person who moves closer I, to home I, and I, actually likes that decision. I hear you, you when you say away. that, but there's that the recent example of that uh, for Oklahoma softball pitcher who decided to go to Nebraska because she wanted nah. to be closer to home. Is it like circumstantial? You think? I mean, I do. And listen, I'm not. I'm not actually trying to. I know that we've also, at you know, Orange Nation has also benefited from people saying I'm coming home and whatnot. But I just really feel like. College is supposed to be that time. This is just personal. It's my personal yeah. list. That's what I yeah. want to say personally. Okay. Fair enough. Uh, I really done. think I think college And Tommy had academics away. because he didn't like school. Okay. Uh, number yeah. four. Not a school guy. <laughs> yeah. He didn't come to play school. I, Num- <laughs> number four. <laughs> exactly. I came to broadcast, homie. Uh, number four. Uh, I have D. Oh, Lord. That was Can campus I, atmosphere. I did this terribly. That was campus atmosphere. Uh, and uh, very stupid on the, me. That was the campus, campus atmosphere, atmosphere surrounding area. Uh, yeah. I, I put NIL, but I only had one and four left, and I wish I would Hates have put money. it. I wish I would have put it first. Okay. I, that That's where I got screwed over. Sam hates I it. Sounds like I it. Sounds like I, it. I value the vibes over the money. I'm okay. sorry, y'all. I'm sorry. Uh, at number three, Tommy, what did your Scantron test say? Uh, see. <laughs> Move closer to home. This is not real. <laughs> this is not real. <laughs> My he, man has down I, A, B, C, D, and E. He has no idea he, which one is yeah, which. He had, no idea. he had moved closer to home and family. Okay, uh, at three. Yeah, I, I see because, hey, end of the day, you got to do that. Maybe someone's sick. Maybe someone's sick. <laughs> Something to think about, Sam. Yeah, Some people don't have a choice. They don't have a choice. I put academics. <laughs> Some people care about school. They wow. care about their career. I didn't mean for they this care about to be... school more than their sick I grandma. I did not intend this. It's a student to... athlete, not an athlete my student. Goodness. Okay? God, I didn't mean for this to become so hostile. Like, oh my gosh. Well, you, you created. Your... Anyway, what's your number two, Tommy? A. Okay, uh, athletics. Me too. Yeah, me athletics. Too. Me too. And then number one? Uh, number one, I think, was NIL for me. It was NIL for you. I put the culture because happiness is the most important thing. Yeah. But like I said, probably would have switched the So NIL Tommy one. doesn't care about school. Yeah. He only cares about making money. Okay. Well, no, it's more, I think two should actually be number one. I think end of the day, you like as a D1 athlete, like you are there to make some, you're there to make some moves yep. in like the actual team in, in your experience with that is as people know, a full-time job on its own. And so if that's off, it's kind of like, what's the point? 
why are you still there? And so two, so that is very important to me. And then just in this day and age, and with a lot of people's situations, I think, I think NIL is just, it's changing up the future of it. And I think knowing that you could end up with some stability and starting to change your life at age 18 mm. is very big. We see some very good examples of That's that. That's too so. important to miss yeah. out on. I'm yeah. with you the whole Shining way Shining example. Yeah, well, you put it at number four, so I don't know she, how important it, was last it is for you. Well, <laughs> you put it as a scantron test. I, so. I had Jim Beheim's retirement at like the number three on the last <laughs> list it, 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 was, it was five. So it, was it was five. It was, five. It was horrible. That was worse. It was that way was worse. He was like, ah, middle of the road. Anyway, uh, okay. to go along with this uh, yeah. trivia today, trivia, let's go. Uh, revolving around the resigning of Bob Huggins, now that Huggy Bear, as he was affectionately called, is gone. Who is the NCAA men's Division One basketball active leader in wins, and who is the active leader in win percentage? Okay, so Huggy was at nine thirty-five, right? We can get that number from you. Mm -hmm. Are you going to allow that? Yeah. Okay. So. Wins and win percentage. It, it, it is two different guys. It's two different questions. Is the one um, the guy from Oakland no. that came to s and played Syracuse? No. Because he's been there since like 79 or something crazy. It, it is not him. Um, I don't know why the vibes I'm getting is that at least one of these two is not going to be like a top Division One coach. I'm feeling like it's going to be something yeah, more yeah, random uh, than that. Yeah, I don't know I why you're thinking that, that too. Either. I think one of them is, and I'm thinking it's either John Calipari or Bill Self. So Bill Self from Kansas, Calipari from Kentucky feels right. Who would be? Well, which one are you going for first? Are you going I for think, total I think wins total or are you wins, going? Okay. I think total wins makes more sense. Mm. I, oh, I feel like Calipari just because of his time at UMass in the 90s, Marcus Camby, that whole scene, um, you know, John Cheney threatening to kill him in the press conference. Like those were big win years. But then what he's done at Kentucky, I feel like there's 25 wins everywhere. So, yeah, I like that. Well, should we Coach toss it? Cal. Let's go, Coach Cal. Is Sam teaming up with you again? Yes. Today? Yeah, I'll let it rip. John Calipari is number two oh. on active wins. If it's Bill Self, Bill Self is number three. Oh, okay. I'm actually not, they're, not, they're, I'm not they're, too upset with that. There are some big names on this list as well. Rick Barnes, Kelvin Sampson, Jim Laranega. It is a non-big name that's at number one. 906 wins for Coastal Carolina's Cliff Ellis. I knew it. Oh I knew goodness. it. Okay. In the percent, percent, I feel it could be in the same boat. Percent, 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 percent. Use logic time. Is this a minimum? Is this a mi is this like a minimum of like 10 games? That's actually a great I question. I mean, all the coach, you have to think like. Or it, is this a minimum? Of, the, the list I looked up was top like winning wins. Mm -hmm. So it's the top 100 college coaches in general, all divisions with wins. These are the D1 coaches that are in there. I only took the top 10 out. Is this also Cliff Ellis? It is not Cliff Ellis. Mm. But that's a good guess because I can totally see are, that happening. You are totally overthinking this and I blame I, it's, myself. Is it John Calipari? It is not John Calipari. Is it the other guy? No. If you if you give, I will make you feel really bad about this. I'm actually pleading with you to give up so I can make you feel really bad about this. Winning percentage. Winning percentage. And this, you said active D it, active, active D one active men's division one coach. Yes. Hubert Davis. No. Mm. I don't know. Tommy and Sam, which non-Power 5 program is basically heralded as a Power 5 program because they run through their conference every year? The Gonzaga Bulldogs, Mark Few, has won just under 84% of his games since taking over, I believe, I in thought, 1999. I thought you were going to say Matt Langle, and I would have been like, oh, my Lord. I don't think he – like, he hasn't been there that long. Not long yeah. enough to really create that – type of separation yeah. but good question Thank i liked you. that that was very good that was very good but let's move on here you guys ready yeah all right a part of our way too early football season preview this is part two we've gone over the schedule so check out last week's if you haven't yet and we're looking at now what is going to be this starting lineup and ultimately who we think could end up where 
As for the Syracuse team, six of the 11 starters are returning on offense, two of five on the offensive line. So we're going to have to plug and play some important roles with guys like Matthew Bergeron moving on. Nine of 11 defensive starters return. That is way more comfortable, especially considering that one of those starters is Gary Williams, who's now with the Cardinals. The other is Michael Jones, who is now with, well, actually, hold on well, a second. Keep in mind, these were, I put these down from the Boston College game, the last regular season game for context for the audience. Okay. So okay. It, so it, this actually, like I'm going to adjust that number because yeah. this is that, that would, you're probably very confused if you're listening right now yeah. because it's a little bit more than nine because Garrett was there beginning of the year. Michael Jones did not play in the Boston College game. That's that's on me. That's so my the mistake. two. That's okay. The two that were not there from the end of last season: Deuce Chestnut, Jahad Carter. But if you look ahead to this future defense, you still see some similar names. I think it'll be. I think you're right with this. I think it'll be seven returners for. 